Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is August 3rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to discuss the present climate and weather situation with regards to the present Atlantic hurricane season. But before I do, I'd like to call your attention to the observed change in distribution of temperatures over the decade of 2001 through 2011. And, and this is a, a, an important indicator. It's, it was put together by Dr. James Hansen. And certainly we've, we've seen some more years of record heat and, and record extremes that could certainly inform us more, but this, this graph is, is still relevant, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that first. So, so what this graph shows is the distribution of, of, su of summer temperature anomalies. And, and what it shows is, is the comparison to the 20th century average, which is noted by the, the green bell curve here, and, and the distribution that we've seen in the, in the first decade of the 2000s. And as you can see, with this shift in distribution, much of the shift has occurred on the hot side. And so you tend to see much hotter to hotter than normal temperatures as a whole. So you get more record daily highs, more warmer than normal temperatures, and you get some extremes here in the in the five standard deviation range that and, and four standard deviation range and even in, in the upper like three and a half standard deviation range that you've never seen before. So you get to see, you, you start to see heat that has really never occurred at certain locations. Now I'd also like to note the, the long tail of this graph and and what it shows is that even though record heat is becoming much more prevalent you still get cooler than normal temperatures in some cases and and in the more extreme cases sometimes you get some all-time record lows despite the fact that the system as a whole is producing much more heat and one of the reasons why this happens is because human-caused climate change is not just changing temperature at the surface of the earth. It's, it's changing temperature in the oceans, and it's changing the energy balance and the relationship between glaciers and oceans and, and the atmosphere. And so this moves a lot of energy around in the earth system. And sometimes you can see odd cool patches that run counter to the overall trend and we're going to talk about a little bit about this today at, in the context of, of the hurricane season so i just want you to think about that now i also want to show you the the present conditions as it relates to all-time records and and daily records this is a a graph provided by noaa and for the past seven days, we see that record high temperatures are outpacing uh, record low temperatures by a bit of a margin in the daily record. Record high minimum temperatures, typically temp temperatures at night, are outpacing record low minimum temperatures by about a five to six to one margin. But then when you get into all time records, you note that over the last seven days, we've had two maximum all time daily record highs and no maximum lows and six uh, all-time record high minimums and no record low minimums. And over the past 30 days, we've only had one record low minimum versus 96 record high minimums and zero record low maximums versus 65 record high maximums. And you have to go back to the annual measure to, to start to see points where record all-time record low maximums occurred and the ratio is about eight 
to 10 to 1 in, in these measures. So, that, so, so that's just some context. So, so keep this in mind as, as I talk about the present hurricane season. Now, one of the things that, that we look at for hurricanes, it, especially fuel for hurricanes, is warm sea surface temperatures. And one of the regions of the world is this 10 to 20 degree north latitude zone off of Africa, which, which tends to spawn most of the storms that we see in the North Atlantic. Now, during June, uh, this region was tended to be cooler than normal. And, and during late July, this, this region shifted back to a cooler than normal pattern. And in, in some locations, uh, right off the coast of Africa, we recorded uh, record low sea surface temperatures for this 10 day period. So this would tend to suppress hurricanes. The other features of note are warmer than normal temperatures running up through the Caribbean and, and in off the US East Coast. And these warmer than normal temperatures would help to facilitate increased strength of storms as they approach the United States and the various land masses near North America. So that's one factor to keep in mind. But presently, we have no tropical storm or cyclone activity. And this is, this is during the time when we would expect to see storms start to ramp up. And, and it's worth noting that, that these lower sea surface temperatures can, can tend to suppress storm development out off of Africa. And, and that these you know, historically have tended suppressed, to suppress hurricane activity during it. So if, if late July's tend, tend to be cold, then, then you tend to see less storms. And this statement is by Philip Klotzbach, who is a, a researcher for, a hurricane researcher, one of, um, uh, an expert on, on hurricane research. And, um, and also just another factor worth noting is the North Atlantic cool pool, which has been very intense re recently hitting record low ranges. And one index is the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation Index, which, which tends to keep track of these, these periodic flips in temperature in the North Atlantic. And, um, and this North Atlantic cool pool is right now cooler than normal, in part due to, to Greenland melt, but also due to uh, natural variability. So that, that's one thing to keep, keep in mind. Now, in addition, the wind shear forecasts are showing that that wind shear is predicted to increase over the tropical Atlantic, which would also tend to suppress hurricanes. And one more factor of note that tends to suppress hurricanes is, is African dust moving out into the North Atlantic. African dust tends to suppress hurricane development. And the expulsions of African dust into the tropical development zone have been quite strong, as we can see in this August 1st, 1st satellite picture. So overall, it looks like though the U.S. is experiencing some rather extreme climate change related impacts due to extreme wildfires and, and intense persistent rain in the U.S. East and, and much warmer than normal temperatures in a number of locations. It appears that, that the trends are, are pointing toward a less active hurricane season. And, and that could, that's good news because uh, on top of everything else right now related to human-caused climate change, we want, don't want to be hip deep in um, record severe storms like we were last year. So, so a bit of good news, but again, just want to remind you about the context of extremes and, and, the, dis and the distribution of extreme temperatures are presently running in a signal related to human-caused climate change. So, so don't fall prey to, to cherry picking, which can tend to happen. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.